Hey everybody, so I thought this might be some exciting news worth sharing. So if you haven't been following, Ford Performance just released their, I'll call it quote unquote, aftermarket tuning engine calibration for several of their current model vehicles. New, I think it's 21 and newer F-150, Bronco Raptor, Bronco 23, 27, um, what else, Ranger Raptor, I believe also. What's exciting about this is for people looking for a little bit more performance, they've got this. <clears throat> now, what I wanna focus on in this video, everyone's looking specifically with F-150 Raptor tuning, and ask yourself, look at the peak numbers, because the peak numbers are not, I don't think they're all that impressive, to be honest with you. But the numbers under the peak in your day-to-day -day driving, I think looks really substantial. But there's a few things I wanna show you that kind of blew my mind. And I'm curious your guys' thoughts on this as why Ford did this. So let's get into this. Okay, so if you go over to Ford Performance or just Google search at performance uh, performanceparts.ford.com, you can go and look at different vehicles, Bronco, Bronco Raptor, Bronco Sport. You can see they've got several tunes that have been released now, engine calibration. Some cool things about this. Number one, this tune, this is the main reason, in my opinion, why you go with a Ford Performance tune versus aftermarket. It doesn't void your warranty. So I think that for the money is that's worth it in itself. Um, and people can ask, man, some aftermarket tuning offers more power. I don't even question it. I'm sure it does. But are they 49 state legal? Ford had to certify these to meet emissions uh, through EPA and CARB certification. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, also, the other thing is, when Ford designed these performance tunes, they had to take into account the engine safety factors and dyno and hardware capability. Ford didn't push these powertrains hard enough that they know that they wouldn't last. Here's what I mean. When Ford or any of the car manufacturers, vehicle manufacturers release engines into vehicles, they have a durability cycle. They design that vehicle around. And when they do that, they have to make sure this thing hits at minimum one life cycle. In a lot of cases, some of these manufacturers are hitting one and a half lifetimes, two lifetimes, three lifetimes. I'll take you back to 2011, and here's what I mean. When Ford was trying to sell people on the idea of bringing the EcoBoost engine, a 3.5 liter to the market, they went and took one of their 3.5 liter EcoBoost engines, put it through their full one life cycle, which they consider was 150,000 miles. Now, 150,000 miles is not that hard on an engine, but they're doing it under the worst case scenarios. Uh, extreme chambers of cold, heat, high loads on the engine. They're, they're trying to make it a worse case. It'd probably be much harder than what most of us would ever put the engine to. They then took that engine, took it off the dyno testing, put it in a vehicle, and then did the next like 30, 40,000 miles of abuse in real world, and it had minimum issues. So why I think these Ford Performance tunes are great is for a few reasons. Number one, you know they put a ton of effort into the calibration. Trans tuning should be on point. Engine calibration should be on point and it's not gonna void your warranty. All right, if you're looking for the fastest tune out, it's probably not gonna be that. But if you're looking for a tune that wouldn't void your warranty or press the hardware limits of an engine to blowing up, I'd think this would be a really safe, a really safe bet. There's a few things here that I think are really, really interesting, specifically around the three liter EcoBoost. First thing I wanna show you guys, check this out, 455 horse, 536 foot pounds of torque. These numbers are incredible. And they're gonna look even more incredible when we compare this to the 3.5 EcoBoost. So check this out, three years, 36,000 mile warranty from when vehicle is new. This is incredible. Um, anyhow, it, and it kind of talks about, you. there's a tune also for the 2.3 and 2.7. From what I've seen, all these tunes require premium fuel. So also put that into your uh, calculation if you're interested in buying one of these. Okay. So here's another tune. You see that they released Ford Performance Parts, released one for the 21 plus F-150 3.5. This is the, not the standard output, I'll call it, not the high output. Then they came out with the 22 F-150 3.5 Raptor Performance Tune. What I'm trying to find out is if this works from 21 to 23, and also will it work on the 24 model year? I'm still looking into that. Here's what caught my eye that I thought was really interesting. So we got Raptor here and F-150 here. 3.5 high output, standard 3.5. So first thing I thought that was kind of interesting, number one, right off the bat, Ford had a big typo when they did these, these charts, which, come on, 
Come on, guys. You can do better. They put the torque in where the horsepower is. They didn't proofread this, but whatever. Not a big deal. But here's what I find interesting about these torque curves. Check out this torque curve right here. On the standard output, you see that this thing really, really is building boost, basically, starting at about 3,000 RPMs, and then flat lines at right around 500, and then tailors off. Here's the high output. What's interesting is at 2,500 RPMs, the 3.5 high output is literally making almost 80 pound-feet of torque more than the, the, the standard output, but then they peak very, very similar numbers. Here's where I find this. This is blows my mind. So there's always been a lot of thought. What are the hardware differences from 3.5 high output and standard output? Guys, this tells me a story. Unless Ford screwed up, they just showed their cards. These engines are identical. Now look after the tune. Look at this, look at this curve. 466, 466. But the high output was 450 versus 400. You could see a little dip off. But then look at the torque curve. They're identical. The curve's identical. The numbers are identical. So you could take a 3.5 standard output and spend $825 and have the exact same results as a Raptor with the same $825 tune. So I always thought there was a difference in turbos and there might have been in the past. But if I looked at this right here, this tells me there, if there is not a turbo difference, these are identical output in the standard output and the high output, which is great for guys that don't have the Raptor. It's also a little bit of a bummer for the guys that are a Raptor owner. So now here's where I think some people will be a little bit bummed out. If we look at the uh, Raptor, peak numbers is 16 horsepower. You're not gonna feel 16 horsepower in the seat of the pants. You absolutely will not. But what you might feel at 2,500 RPMs is this curve right here. You know, you look at these differences here, you're talking 16 horse. But in these ranges here, this is more like 50 pound feet of torque. So you will feel some differences here. Uh, I'm sorry, in horsepower, but then look at the torque numbers here. There's big differences in this. So 50, it, it's gonna be noticeable. I just don't know if it's gonna be like earth shattering noticeable. But for the guys that have a regular output F-150 to get this tune, holy cow, that's incredible. Now let's stack up one more that kind of blows my mind. So check this out. <laughs> this is the part that just blows my mind. Ford went and took the Bronco Raptor from 418 horse to 455, 460, 440 foot pounds of torque to 536. So when I compare the 3.5 high output versus the 3.0 high output, you're literally only getting 18 pound feet of torque and only 11 horsepower. So in my opinion, the real winner in all of these tunes I've seen so far it's the three liter EcoBoost. So then ask yourself, why do you even need the three five high output if you can take a 3.0 and make the same power? That's interesting. It makes me wonder, could Ford potentially be getting planning to get rid of the three five and replace it with a 3.0? I don't know. I mean, these numbers are pretty telling. Ford had to give the exact same amount of dyno testing and development with a 3.0 as the three five. Makes me think, is Ford playing it conservative on the 3.5 because they know this is a truck engine and they just kind of want to leave a little safety factor so they're not pushing the engine as much? Or are they going the opposite on 3.0 knowing people are never going to be towing really any kind of trailer with a Bronco Raptor so we can push the limits a little more? Or is the 3.0 a little bit more of a dynamite engine? I don't know. But what I'm excited about is that there are these aftermarket tunes now by Ford Performance so you get your factory warranty. I love this. And for 825 bucks, man, it seems like a no brainer for a lot of these things. But then you do have to consider, obviously, if you want to run premium for those that are not running premium all the time. So I thought this was pretty interesting. Um, the power numbers are really interesting on the 3.5, especially when you compare it to the 3.0. Then ask yourself, why is Ford doing this right now? My gut feel, I think they're trying to like wave off a little bit on the, uh, the RHO, just my opinion. But I'm glad they're doing this. It shows that these guys are still trying to bring some innovation and performance to you Bronco, Raptor, and F-150 owners. So anyhow, if you liked the video, feel free to like and subscribe. Have a good one.